Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at the Maps app on the iPad. So the Maps app on the iPad is basically a supersized version of the Maps app that you may have seen on the iPod Touch or the iPhone, but it looks beautiful. Let's take a closer look at it. So here's your basic Google Maps view. You can use your finger to move the map around. You could also zoom in and zoom out. To search for something, tap in the search field. You can search for recents or you can use the keyboard. You can search for a specific address or you could type in a general search term. In this case, I'm typing in search for a specific place. and I'll find it pretty easily. Once you find it, you can press the I button. It'll give you more information there. You can jump right to the website. You can save the information to a contact. You can share it as a V card, actually, and you can bookmark it here in the Maps program. You can also just jump right to directions. So let's say I want to search for something where there's more than one location. So let's say I can search for an Apple store. When I do that, it's going to drop several pins in the map, and you can see what each one is by tapping it. You can see some of them aren't actually Apple stores at all, but they are related. I could scan around in the map and find ones that are even just off the edge. Or how about I search for something even more general. Here I'll get tons of pins and I can zoom in and take a closer look at each one. So what else can you do? You can press this bottom corner here and you can switch to satellite view and view your map as satellite or my favorite view is the hybrid view. You can also go back to classic. Let's zoom out here and we can look at traffic. You can see here all the traffic reports. Okay, so how about directions? Well, go in here, we'll switch to directions, and you can pick two locations. So let's say I'm going to look for a way to get from Coors Field to a specific location, like say one of these Apple stores. It'll pick one of them here, and it will draw a map to it, and you can see the directions. Now, Google's not always great and give you directions. You can see here it wants me to get on the highway, go north for some reason, and turn around to be able to get back this way. It may actually be accurate, but it seems like perhaps I should get to go a more direct route. I can switch to public transportation directions, and I can even switch to walking directions as well. So you can see it does save past searches, even directions. So here's a set of directions that I did recently and it will draw those and then you can tap on start here for directions and it will actually come up with a list and display the first step. You can go through the, each step of the drive and it will show you each step. I can switch to the view of the list here and I can jump to any part that I want. So one of my favorite things about Google Maps is Street View. You can use Street View in the Maps app by dropping a pin first. The way you do that is tap and hold until a pin drops, like that. And now I can take this pin and I can actually move it around to any location that I want. So I can put it, say, right here. And whenever I get this little orange icon lighting up, I know that I can do Street View there. If I press I, I not only get information about the nearby address, but I get the little picture here. I tap that and it switches to street view mode. And now I can view what it looked like when the Google car passed by. And I can continue down a street by using the arrows. And it gives me the little map down here at the bottom. I can return to the map by doing that. If you ever want to find your current location, just press that little target button there. Also, you have your bookmarks that you can add. 
easily. So you can have locations like your home or places you go to normally and need directions to and from. It's very handy. Now of course the GPS location that the Maps app finds is not based on a real GPS location like up to satellites. It's based on local Wi-Fi networks. So it's decently accurate but not going to be as accurate as your iPhone. We believe that the iPad 3G that will come out in May will have the ability to have real GPS. The Maps app is still not as powerful as Google Maps on the web. For instance, when you're doing directions you can't have multiple waypoints. But here's the good news. You can actually use Google Maps really well in Safari on your iPad. So if you need that functionality just go to the regular Google Maps in the browser. So Google Maps is a necessary application to have on the iPad since it's on the iPhone and the iPod Touch. But other than that it's really nothing special. It is fun to look at satellite views and it's a lot of fun to look at street views on the device and it's super fast. I mean just moving around in those views is really quick. You won't really notice the difference between using an iPad or using a desktop computer. Hope you like this look at the Maps app on the iPad. Till next time this is Gary Rosenzweig with Mac Bones Now.